H0. You're outside, maybe walking the dog or grabbing your mail, when suddenly, tap, tap, tap. It's not rain, it's not snow. It's something in between. Tiny ice pellets start bouncing off your jacket. They sting a little, like nature's version of getting hit with uncooked rice. Annoying? Sure. Dangerous? Not really. This is the most harmless stage of hail, often overlooked or mistaken for sleet. These tiny pellets, sometimes called soft hail or ice grains, are usually just a few millimeters wide. They form when supercooled water droplets collide with ice crystals high in the atmosphere. The result? Light, fragile hailstones that shatter on impact like sugar cubes. They don't carry enough weight to break anything, but they can make a surprising amount of noise if you're under a metal roof. Meteorologists usually don't get too worked up over this level. It's more of a curiosity than a crisis. If you're driving, your windshield's fine. If you're gardening, your plants will probably just shrug it off. But if you're bald and caught in it, you might feel personally attacked. Still, this level of hail serves as nature's warning shot. It's telling you that cold, unstable air is brewing above. And if things intensify, you could be in for a real storm. While while H0 is more sound than fury, it sets the stage for what's coming next. Because once those soft grains start growing, they don't just become louder, they become dangerous. And the next size up, that's when the damage begins to show. Tiny doesn't last forever. Let's look at what happens when those innocent pellets turn hard and start biting back. H1. So the soft little ice grains are gone and now it's getting real. You hear that same tapping on your windows, but this time it's sharper, more aggressive. Step outside and it feels like the sky's flicking tiny marbles at you. These hailstones are still small, usually under 5 millimeters, but they pack a punch for their size. Unlike their soft, crumbly cousins from before, these are solid, dense, little beads of compressed ice that don't shatter on contact. Think frozen Tic Tacs, but drop from the top of a skyscraper. They won't wreck your roof, but they can chip paint on your car or leave tiny dings in aluminum siding. And if you've ever been caught without a hoodie during one of these, you know the sting is real. It's like nature just learned how to throw. Scientifically, this is the point where the updrafts in a storm are strong enough to let hailstones recycle through layers of freezing air. Each trip adds a new coat of ice, hardening them into mini-missiles. It's not just weather anymore, it's engineering. Now, while there aren't many famous disasters caused by 5mm hailstones, farmers definitely notice this stage. Delicate crops like lettuce or herbs can get shredded. It's the agricultural equivalent of death by a thousand cuts. This size often flies under the radar in weather reports, but it's a clear sign that the storm's evolving. The air is colder, the winds are stronger, and the ice is growing with every second it stays airborne. And here's the thing, once hail hits this stage, it rarely stops here. The storm keeps building, the hailstones keep layering, and the next step is where things start to leave a mark, not just on your plants or paint, but your property. H2. Now things are starting to sound different. Not just a tap on the roof, but a steady rattle. You glance outside and realize those little frozen pebbles just leveled up. They're about the size of marbles now, bouncing across pavement, clattering off gutters, and starting to leave a trail. This is where hail becomes more than just an inconvenience. At 5 to 10 millimeters in diameter, it's still small enough to fit in the palm of your hand but large enough to leave a mark, literally. Thin sheet metal might show a few new dents. Plants, torn up like someone ran a weed whacker through your garden. Tender crops like tomatoes, herbs, or leafy greens. Say goodbye. This level has the power to crack weaker windows or take out a porch light if it catches the wrong angle. You wouldn't want to be outside without a hat. Even small hail at this speed stings like someone pelting you with glass beads. In places like the Midwest or parts of Central Europe, hail of this size is fairly common during spring and summer storms. It's the point where farmers start checking insurance coverage and drivers wonder if their hoods just got peppered. Scientifically, marble hail means the updrafts are even stronger now. Each stone is taking multiple trips through the cloud, collecting layer after layer of supercooled water that instantly freezes into solid ice. It's still manageable, but there's momentum here. Every second in the sky makes these stones bigger, harder, and more dangerous. And once they pass the marble stage, they don't stop politely bouncing off your roof. They start smashing into it. The next size up, that's when skylights break, windshields crack, and being outside turns into a serious risk. H3. The first thing you notice is the sound. Not a light rattle anymore, but a sharp, constant drumming. You look out the window and realize the hailstones aren't bouncing like before. They're slamming. At this size, around 10 to 15 millimeters, they hit with enough force to shatter wheat glass, rip through garden beds, and turn your backyard into a battlefield of broken leaves and flying ice. These are the kinds of hailstones that make you hesitate before stepping outside. You'll feel them even under a thick hoodie. For animals without shelter, especially birds or small pets, this level can cause serious injury. It's not just about discomfort anymore. 
anymore. It's actual danger. From a scientific angle, this is where the storm's updrafts are doing some serious heavy lifting. The hailstones are getting recycled through the cloud, picking up layer after layer of ice. Think of it like a snowball rolling through a freezer, building strength every time it rises and falls. Damage reports start to show up here. In rural areas, crops are often shredded beyond saving. Roof shingles can split. Skylights can crack. It's not just a cosmetic problem anymore. Property starts taking hits that cost real money to fix. In some regions, this size of hail is enough to trigger insurance claims, especially for homes with older roofs or cars left out in the open. And this is still not even close to the worst of it. These large marbles are only the warm-up act. The real chaos starts when hailstones grow big enough to smash through windows and dent steel. At the next level, you won't just be staying inside because it's smarter. You'll be doing it because it's absolutely necessary. H4. By now, the sound overhead is impossible to ignore. It's no longer just loud. It's violent. These hailstones are the size of small grapes, and they are not playing around. You might see them bouncing across the pavement, but the way they hit is anything but playful. When these fall, you start hearing things break. At this stage, windows don't just rattle. They shatter. Cars parked outside start to look like they've been through a riot. Deep dents appear across hoods and roofs, and windshield cracks become a common sight. Siding gets torn up. Roof tiles crack like brittle cookies. You'll hear it before you see it, but once you do, it's unforgettable. Meteorologic this is the point where updrafts inside the storm are bordering on extreme. The hailstones are suspended long enough to keep collecting more and more frozen layers, gaining weight and speed with every loop. When they fall, they're dropping from high altitude heights and picking up serious velocity. We're talking highway speeds by the time they reach the ground. There's no more margin for error at this level. Anyone caught outside without shelter is in real danger of injury. Even a bike helmet won't give you full protection. People sprinting for cover have been hit and hospitalized. If you're in a car, pulling over under an overpass might be your best bet. In 2016, a storm in Texas dropped hail this size and caused over a billion dollars in damage, cracking windshields across entire neighborhoods and punching holes in residential roofs like they were made of cardboard. And still, we're not at the peak. What comes next isn't just destructive, it's life-threatening. The kind of hail that doesn't just break things, it breaks the rules of what we expect weather to do. H5 now we're stepping into territory where nature stops being annoying and starts becoming hostile. When hail reaches the size of grapes or even larger, every second of exposure matters. You can hear it in the way it hits rooftops with a blunt, cracking thud. You can see it in the gardens, now shredded beyond recognition, and in the cars dented like they were caught in a metal storm. At this size, hailstones are not just falling, they're slamming into the earth with enough force to cause real injury. A direct hit to the head? That can leave you dazed or worse. Pets and livestock are at serious risk, and crops are often wiped out completely. One storm in Nebraska dropped hailstones in this range and took out entire fields of soybeans in under 10 minutes. The science behind it is just as intense. For a hailstone to grow this big, the storm has to be powerful. Updrafts must be so strong they suspend ice chunks in the cloud, like they're floating in zero gravity, letting them collect layer after layer of ice. Eventually, gravity wins, and when these hailstones fall, they hit harder than most people expect. You can't just brush these off your windshield. Sometimes they take the glass with them. Insurance adjusters dread this level. Roof repairs, broken windows, dented siding, destroyed AC units. It adds up fast. For homeowners, this is when you realize why your policy includes a hail clause, and, and yet this still isn't the worst of it. These hailstones are dangerous, but the next size up enters a different category entirely. It's not just your house or your car on the line anymore. At the next level, a single stone can put someone in the hospital. H6. When hail grows to the size of golf balls, it crosses a very real line. This isn't just property damage anymore, it's personal danger. These ice chunks fall with such force that they can cave in windshields, knock birds straight out of the sky, and leave people bleeding from a single direct hit. You don't want to be outside when this happens, not even for a second. Picture a hailstone this size falling from a thunderstorm over 10 miles high. With gravity pulling it down and nothing but air in the way, it can reach speeds up to 70 miles per hour. That's like being hit with a rock thrown by a major league pitcher, except the sky is throwing dozens at once. In 2000, a hailstorm swept through Fort Worth, Texas, dropping stones in this range. The result was chaos. Thousands of cars totaled, skylights smashed, and entire streets covered in broken glass and shredded trees. One woman suffered a fractured skull just walking to her car. This is also where the cost of damage skyrockets. Roof tiles aren't just cracked anymore, they're ripped away. Car roofs buckle, power lines go down, and for animals caught out in the open, especially livestock or birds, survival isn't guaranteed. At this size, hail turns into a true weapon of weather. The updrafts needed to keep these stones suspended are extreme, sometimes exceeding 100 miles per hour. These are the types of storms that produce not just hail but tornadoes too. And still, we're climbing, because just when you think hail can't get more violent, it does. The next level brings ice that can punch straight through rooftops, crush car hoods, and make being caught outside not just dangerous, but potentially fatal. H7. 
At this size, hail is no longer just a weather event. It becomes a blunt force threat. These ice bombs, roughly the size of a hen's egg, hit with such violence that entire neighborhoods can be left looking like they were hit by a sudden riot of frozen stone. Roofs don't just get damaged at this level. They collapse. Skylights explode inward. Trees are stripped of leaves in minutes. People caught outside without shelter can suffer deep bruises, concussions, or worse. It's not uncommon for emergency rooms to fill up with injuries after storms like this, especially when hailstones fall without much warning. Back in 2010, Oklahoma experienced a storm that dropped hail of this size across the city of Norman. The result? Millions in damage within minutes. Entire rows of cars at dealerships were flattened. Apartment complexes reported hundreds of broken windows. And across the city, sirens wailed not for the storm itself, but for the destruction it left behind. Scientifically, stones this size need supercharged updrafts to stay airborne. Inside the storm, winds are cycling so violently that hailstones rise and fall through freezing air over and over, layering more ice each time. When the storm can no longer hold them, they fall with terrifying force. And this is when the streets start to look like war zones. Trees splinter. Power lines snap. Roads are covered in leaves, ice, and glass. If you're watching from inside, it feels like the storm is trying to break in, but the storm still isn't finished. The ice continues to grow, and once it surpasses the size of an egg, it starts punching holes straight through rooftops, crushing anything it lands on. You'll want to see what comes next, if you can handle it. H8. When hail reaches the size of a tennis ball, survival becomes the focus. This is not just destructive, it's lethal. Each hailstone is now a dense, compact ball of layered ice, slamming into the ground with enough force to punch holes through rooftops, destroy entire sections of fencing, and leave vehicles looking like they were caught in a demolition zone. At this size, a single stone can kill livestock. It can seriously injure anyone caught outside. Windows are no match, neither is a helmet, in many cases. And if you think sheltering under a tree might help, think again. Branches snap under the weight of ice impacts, and trees themselves can be stripped bare or toppled. One of the most devastating examples happened in South Dakota in 2010. During a massive supercell event, tennis ball-sized hailstones tore through homes, flattened crops, and left craters in soft ground. Emergency responders couldn't keep up with the volume of calls. The sound alone was like a firing squad pounding rooftops with ice cannonballs. From a scientific standpoint, storms capable of producing hail like this are among the most powerful on Earth. Updrafts inside these clouds are stronger than hurricane-force winds, sometimes over 100 miles per hour recycling hailstones until they reach this terrifying size. These storms often appear with other extreme elements like tornadoes, torrential rain, and deadly lightning. You can't wait these out on a porch. You need solid shelter, underground if possible. Even inside a car, windshields can explode and roofs can buckle. But here's the chilling part. As massive as this already is, the atmosphere is capable of producing hailstones even bigger. And once we step past this threshold, we leave behind property damage and enter the realm of pure catastrophe. H9. At this size, hail stops feeling like weather and starts feeling like a weapon. Imagine solid chunks of ice the size of a baseball dropping from the sky at freeway speeds. The result isn't just broken windows or cracked roofs, it's full structural collapse, fatal injuries, and landscapes that look like they've been hit by artillery. Hailstones of this magnitude carry incredible force. They can break through multiple layers of roofing, crush car roofs flat, and strip trees bare in minutes. If you're caught outside during a storm like this, the chances of walking away unharmed are slim. It only takes one of these to turn a routine trip into a hospital visit, or worse. In July 1986, a storm over the Gopal Gandhi district in Bangladesh dropped hailstones that reportedly weighed over two pounds each. Baseball-sized and beyond, 92 people lost their lives. It remains one of the deadliest hail events ever recorded. That storm erased crops, shattered homes, and stunned meteorologists around the world. At this point, the atmosphere is running a full-scale operation. The thunderstorm must sustain violent updrafts capable of lifting and suspending ice chunks the size of grapefruits over and over again, until they become too heavy to hold. When they fall, it's like the sky is dropping stones. These events are rare but not impossible. And when they happen, the recovery is massive. Insurance claims explode. Power grids go offline. Entire communities face weeks or months of repairs. And, and believe it or not, this still isn't the final form. There's one more level that pushes the very limits of what we thought nature could do. Beyond this, hail doesn't just destroy property or threaten lives. It rewrites the rules of what a storm is capable of. H10. This is it, the final, most extreme stage. When hail reaches the size of softballs or larger, we are no longer talking about damage. We're talking about devastation. These are not hailstones. They are ice boulders, often weighing half a kilo or more, falling from the sky with the power to break bones, punch holes through solid structures, and flatten vehicles as if they were made of cardboard. When something this size falls from over 30,000 feet, it carries the energy of a dropped bowling ball. 
Roofs collapse instantly, car hoods crumple like foil, trees are shredded down to their trunks, and if a person is caught outside, the result can be fatal in seconds. On August 13, 2019, in the town of Villa Carlos Paz in Argentina, a hailstone measuring nearly 19 centimeters in diameter was recorded. It may be the largest ever reliably documented. Scientists classified it as a gargantuan hail event. The impact left deep craters in the ground and tore through concrete tiles. Survivors described it as sounding like explosions echoing across the rooftops. Storms capable of producing hail, this large are freaks of nature. The updrafts needed to keep these giants suspended in the air are stronger than those found in many hurricanes. It takes the perfect mix of instability, moisture, and wind shear to build an environment violent enough to grow something this dangerous. Events like this are rare, but when they do happen, entire towns can be paralyzed. Emergency services become overwhelmed. Insurance cannot keep up. Cleanup takes weeks and the scars can last for years. This is the ceiling of what hail can do, the very top of nature's icy arsenal. But the terrifying part is, with shifting weather patterns and more extreme storms emerging, we might not have seen the true limit yet.